Hello, this lecture will cover pages 83 through 90 of my lecture notes. So please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on combinational logic circuits, part A, sum of products and Boolean simplification of logic circuits. Starting out on page 83 here, we're going to define combinational logic circuit again. It's a circuit whose outputs are a function of and only of the combination of logic levels present at the inputs after a propagation delay. In other words, on a combinational circuit, you set up the inputs. And, and the, the only delay between the input and the output response is going to be a propagation delay of the circuits, of the combinational circuits that are inside this block here. Combinational logic circuits can be represented in two standard forms, the sum of products, SOPs, and the product of sum, POSs. And I'll define on the next page what I mean by that. On page number 84, you can see that sum of products, here's three examples of sums of products. Notice their AND, their AND gates, in this case, AND gates and OR tie them together. The output gate is an OR. In other words, this is AND OR topology here. There is, um, there, they are, uh, the AND gate is a uh, multiplication uh, and the OR gate is a sum. So it's a sum of these individual products. They call it sum of products. Product of sums is OR AND logic. The output gate is AND. So it's first level OR, second level AND, and you can see that you have an OR gate, in this case a three input OR gate, in this case a two input OR gate, and then the output, those, those two gates feed into an AND gate is the output gate. The most popular out of the two, and the one we're going to use this semester, is going to be the sum of products. We're going to be using the sum of products form. Um, simplifying logic circuits. We did this in the previous chapter, but we're going to spend a little bit more time on it in this chapter. Why? Well, you know, you know the reasons why. Fewer chips. You reduce the cost of the overall design. It increases the speed. Lower power consumption, and it's much easier to troubleshoot. On page number 85, I want you to notice that we have a uh, we have a circuit there, and we want you to find the Boolean expression for the output Z in the circuit. What I'd want you to do now is I want you to stop the video, and I want you to go ahead and, and get this output expression for Z, uh, putting these midterms in. Make sure you put the midterms in right here. It's just easier to see it when you write the, the, uh, the output response. And then answer yourself the question, how many gates does it take to implement the Z circuit? See if you can get seven, and then I want you to go through a simplification of the Boolean expression and see if you get my answer down here. You have to be able to do this type of work for the exam. On page number 86, I'd like you to take a minute and simplify those two expressions on page 86. Notice that... Uh, it takes four gates to implement this logic. If you reduce it, two gates. So obviously you'd want to reduce this logic down to, to using these two gates. Um, let's take a look at this example real quick here. Um, I want you to try it on your own. You have to be able to do it on your own. But I used the Morgan's theorem, and, and I used the Morgan's theorem by tackling just this, this expression here within the parentheses. The AB, I left it alone. I didn't look at the output. The output gate is an AND gate. It's, it's a multiplication right at this point. I just worked on the Morgan's theorem at this point. And let's see how I went from here to here. I changed the basic gate from an AND to an OR. I inverted the input here, so put a bar above it. I inverted the input here. And these BC, it's an input coming from another gate. You have to treat this as a separate gate here. This BC is a separate gate. I put a bar above it, and then you bar the whole thing, which takes this bar away. It's a bar bar. It didn't show that intermediate step, but you should be able to see that. And then you come down to this point. Then I used the Morgan's theorem again here. I basically brought this A out to here. And when I go to this next step, I use the Morgan's theorem on just the BC. Just the BC. The A's been taken out here. 
and change the basic gate from an AND to an OR. Invert the input B and C and invert the output takes the bar away. You should be able to follow these steps. Down here, simplifications. Well, notice my simplification down here. No De Morgan's theorem on this bottom example. Make sure you can do both of these examples. And when you when you boil the second example down, notice I get two expressions for z. I'd probably accept either one of them in the simplification. However, this one here takes four gates, and this one here takes three gates. But in this exception, I would rather implement this. Why would I do that? Why would I choose this four gate configuration over this three gate configuration? Because I'm going to be wasting I'm going to be wasting gates down here because it's an OR gate and an AND gate. There's an AND gate and there's an OR gate. Up here, it would take four gates, but don't forget, this is AND OR topology. I can use all NAND gates to implement this expression. I would use all four in the 7400 chip to implement this. I don't waste anything. Make sure you understand that. On page 87, Look over the following examples before you try doing any of the homework. These are very important examples. I put two stars on all of them. Um, example 4.3 on page 134, and example 4.4 and 4.5 and 4.6. Uh, on page 135, they talk about example, they talk about example 4.3. And I want to read something to you because it's pretty important. I'm in your textbook on page 135 here. And uh, if we have a different edition, you'll find this same, in TOSI, you'll find this same information in a newer edition. But uh, as you look through example 4.3, it says example 4.3 illustrates the frustration of encounter, uh, encountered in Boolean simplification. Because we have arrived at the same equation, which appears irreducible by two different methods, it might seem reasonable to conclude that this final expression is the simplest form. In fact, the simplest form of this equation is really this z here, not what we have up here. But there's no way apparent uh, to reduce step 5, this step up here, to reach this simpler version. You're at a dead end. In this case, we missed an operation earlier in the process that could have led to the simpler form. The question is, how could we have known we've missed this step? Well, you, you just don't. You just you just don't know that it's. You get down to a point you think it's you have your simplest form, and it is for that way for that procedure for the way you proceeded through the example. But if you didn't miss any steps, you you'll absolutely get to the simplest form. But later on in the chapter, we're going to be working with K maps. And you won't use Boolean algebra anymore through the rest of the semester. You just use Boolean algebra here the first three or four weeks. After that, we use K maps, and K maps always gives you the simplest solution. Okay, that's going to take us over to page number 88. Again, we're going to mention here fundamental products here. Fundamental products is the logical product that result in a one output for a given input condition. I already led you into this later on, uh, earlier when I talked about fundamental products. Um, here's a two input example. Notice we have two inputs, so we have four possibilities, zero, zero through one, one. And the fundamental product for A bar, B bar is right here. The fundamental product for A bar, B is here. The fundamental product for A, B bar is here and the fundamental product for both of them being the high a b is down here these are called in these are called fundamental products for these input combinations how to use the sum of products fundamental products to design combinational logic circuits here's three quick examples example number 1 let's say we want to produce a truth table our specification says we want to produce an output that looks like this well, it's obviously the, an AND gate, but let's say you don't know that. We want to produce an output. We want to produce a circuit that will, um, that will generate an output only when both of the inputs are at a high state. Well, that fundamental product is AB. And there it's implemented, AB, through the AND function. 
Matter of fact, this is so simple, it's pretty confusing. Let's go to the next one. Example two, the OR gate. Let's say the specification says that we want to generate a signal that produces an output when any input is high. Well, we do the, the truth table looks like this. A zero, one, one, one. Anytime any of the outputs anytime any of the inputs is a one. It has three fundamental products and you write them down. This is your A bar B. This is your A B bar. And this one right here is your A B. And then you simplify this and it's an OR gate. Let's look at the third design. Design a logic circuit with two inputs, A and B, that will produce an output Y when the inputs are different. This is a very useful circuit. We're going to talk about it in the next, next uh, lecture. So it has two inputs. So you write the two inputs down, A and B. You have a vertical line, and you have your output, Y. You put down all possibilities, starting at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. And you generate an output whenever the inputs are different, and there's your truth table. It's two fundamental products. Looks like this, A bar B or A B bar. You generate the circuit. Now notice here, you don't have to, from this point forward, you don't have to put in the, the inverters. I, I know where A bar comes from, so you don't have to put an inverter in front, in, in front of this gate and then feed A into it to get the A bar. Same thing down here. I'll let you go ahead from this point forward and just put in an A bar or a B bar or a D bar, whatever you need. You don't have to write the inverter in. This gate that implements this logic, th this series of gates here that implements this logic expression is called an exclusive OR gate. The exclusive OR gate has many applications and we'll discuss it in the next lecture. That concludes the lecture.